G'day fishos, welcome to another Tech Tips episode. In this video, we're gonna learn how to tie a Paternoster rig, also known as a dropper loop rig. Got a few hints and tips to go along with this to ensure this knot doesn't let you down. Let's get stuck into it. To start our Paternoster rig, we need to create a small loop in the end of the line for our sinker. This is so that we can change sinker size according to the current and the depth we might be fishing in. Also allows us to remove the sinker while traveling along to ensure it's not swinging around and causing any damage to the boat. We're going to double our line up like so and create another small loop. Twist and feed the end of the first loop back through the second one and pull tight. It's important if you're using thick line that you make your loop longer than the sinker. This is because the knot will not fit through the eye of the sinker if it's not long enough. So by doing so, we don't need for the knot to pass through the sinker eye so we can loop it over like so. If it's too short, what happens is the knot will hit on the eye of the sinker, it will not pass through, therefore we can't loop it over the end of the sinker. So loop it through like so, and pull it in. Cut your tag end off and you're good to go. If you're fishing coral reefs and rock, you might want to run a sinker breakaway, which consists of some lighter line to what your main line is and also your leader. So if you're using 50 pound main line and 60 pound leader, you might want to go a sinker breakaway of 40 pound. What this allows us to do is to tie them together very simply, create a loop like so. And what we want to do is pull that line through. We want to go through that loop twice as well, like so. Pull down nice and tight on both ends. Cut your tag ends off. And there we have a sinker breakaway. So if the sinker does get caught up now, it will break here and not on your Paternoster rig or your main line. Now to create our dropper loop, we want to come up away from our sinker at a desired length that we'd like our hook to be away from our sinker. Then we create a large circle. The size of this circle will determine how far away your hook is from your knot. We then grab the line and we begin to twist these two pieces of line over the top of each other, like so. So we grab that between our hands and our thumbs and we begin to wrap one over the other. We want to do that six to eight times. And you'll see there, we have a series of twists, we have a part, and what we want to do is grab the end of this loop here and pass it up through the part that's in the line. Like so. We want to put some saliva or lubrication on these twists where it comes through the part. So a bit of saliva or some water. It's really important you do that, otherwise it will create heat and friction as we go to pull that knot tight, and that will weaken the line dramatically, and that's often how they'll break. So we want to grab this end in our mouth and pull tight. Like so. And there we have our dropper loop. Now to attach our hook to our dropper loop, the most common way is to simply grab the loop, go through the hook eye, and over the end of the hook and pull down. Unfortunately, when fighting big fish with large drag pressures, it creates a weak point on the end of the loop and can break through. It can also break through on the end of the hook eye where it meets the shank. It creates a sharp edge right there, it can cut through in the leader, pull through and you lose the fish. To combat that, we simply want to tie the hook on. To tie the hook on, we can either use a lock blood knot or we create a simple what they call overhand knot, or what most people refer to as a granny knot, like so. And we simply want to get the end, the loop of that, go through, up over the hook, and begin to pull down, like so. There we have a really secure connection between our hook and our dropper loop. If a fish takes it down deep, We've got double the strength of line there as well, and we've reduced the chance of it cutting through on the end of the hook eye. 
You may want to create another dropper loop up further to create a double paternoster or double dropper loop rig. That's fine if you're chasing small fish, but for large fish, only run the one. Otherwise, if you catch two big fish fighting against each other, they'll often break on the top dropper loop because you're pulling from above that and you'll lose both fish. So for big hard fighting fish, only run the one hook set like that. I'm now going to repeat the process using monofilament line. We create our sinker loop by doubling the line up, creating another smaller loop, twist once, feed back through. Pull down tight, pull in your tag end, and cut any excess tag end off. We then want to come up our leader from the desired distance away from the sinker that we want to create our dropper loop. So we come up, create our loop, and then we begin to twist the line over the top of one another between our fingers. I'm going to do that six to eight times. And you see that we've kept the line parted. We now have the dropper loop like so. We're going to grab the end of our dropper loop and pass that back up through where the parted line is. Like that. Now it's important that we lubricate these twists, particularly where the line feeds back through the part in the line. So get a bit of saliva, put it on to ensure we lubricate. We do not want any friction or heat put through that knot, otherwise it weakens the line dramatically. We then grab the end of the loop, put this in your mouth, between your teeth, and begin to pull from both ends. And there we have our dropper loop, ready to go for our hook. Simply grab it between your fingers, create a point. If you have troubles creating a point on the end of the line, put it between your teeth and pull it up through your teeth and that will put a point on the end. We want to feed it through the eye of our hook and create the overhand knot. Simply back through, like so, and then loop the hook over the end of the loop. We then begin to pull slowly down, nice and tight, and there we have a really secure connection from our dropper loop to our hook. You may want to repeat the process further up the line to create a double dropper loop rig. As I mentioned earlier, you only want to do that if you're chasing small fish, but for big hard fighting fish, you only want to run the one hook set. Okay, so there's our finished double dropper loop pattern oster rig. As you can see, equal distance between our sinker and our first dropper loop, second dropper loop, all the way through to our swivel that we attach to our main line. As you can see, very simple yet effective rig for any of the bottom feeding fish you might be chasing. If you're targeting large hard fighting fish with big drag pressures, then we simply want to go to a single dropper loop to ensure we're not catching two big fish and then breaking off while they fight between each other. You can attach a set of gang hooks if you're using large flesh baits or simply put on a circle hook for live baits. Really effective rig for targeting your larger fish. Anyway guys, I hope you've learned something from this episode. Until next time, tight lines.